Hey guys, today we're gonna be reading uh, Five Nights at Freddy's, Fraz Bear Frights, book number two, Fetch. Or is that thing is it? Fitch or Fetch or something? Now, this book here, I <coughs> I absolutely love this cover of this book. I think this is probably going to bring out a lot that's going to be inside this book. So if I were to guess, it would probably be a disturbing one. Of course, like every other every other book series, we're introducing this. So this is over 86 pages long for the first chapter. And like we did with the Hunger Games that we did not finish, because we're not, I'm finishing that on the, la on the laughing moment next year. So a lot of book series are going to be happening and finishing next year. That I either started but didn't finish or were near to finish. Like Raimi Nightingale, The Last Kids on Earth, all these other books. Now, of course, Last Kids on Earth could be finished this month. I don't know. But we're not focusing on laughing moment on this channel. We're focusing on this book series on Adam Ernest. So I'm hoping this will bring you a lot of frights. And not one just say just frights. I'd also hope this book brings you some hope and brings you some joy and all of that the table of context is right there i love how it has like static on it like how it did in front of and freddy's itself it has um table of content contents is fetch lonely friend and out of stock which fetch goes to page 86 lonely freddy goes to page 164 and then out of stock is a thing is basically the ending so there's ma mainly three chapters in this book, but they're each like almost 100 pages long. So um, that's kind of insane. So here we go. Ah! Sorry. Fetch. The surf, the wind, and the rain were at war, battering against the old building so for so forcefully. Greg won. What well, Greg wondered if its crumbling walls could stand against them. When the bowing thunder bla blasted the boarded up window again, Greg jumped back, stumbling into Cyril, and tomping on his foot. Ow! Cyril shoved Greg, jabbing his flashlight spastic, spast spastically at the wall in front of them. The light scanned over dropping sections of blue striped wallpaper and what looked like two red letters, FR streaks of something dark sprayed over the stripes. Was that was that that was that pizza sauce or something else? Heidi, Heidi laughed at his two bumbling friends. It's just the wind, guys. Suck it up. Another gust hit the building and the walls shuddered, drowning out. Heidi's voice, the rain pounding on the metal. Roof wretched up, but inside the building close by, something metallic clanged, loud enough to be heard over the wind and rain. What was that? Cyril swirled and swung his flashlight in wind. Ark at barely 13, Cyril was, young, a younger, was a year younger than Greg and Heidi, though still in their f fledging fled Fledg fledgling fresh men class. He was short and skinny with boyish features and limp brown hair, and he had the misfortune of sounding like a cartoon mouse. It didn't win him many friends. Let's get out which get let's go check out of the old pizza check out the old pizzeria. Cyril mimicked Greg's suggestion. Yeah, th this was a great idea. It was his crisp autumn crisp autumn night. And the seaside town was dark, robbed of power by the latest storm's assault. Greg and his friends had planned a Saturday night of gaming and junk food. But as soon as the power went out, <coughs> Heidi's parents tried to recruit them for a board game, the family's tradition during power, power outages. Heidi had convinced his parents to let the boys bike the short distance to Greg's house, where... They could play one of Greg's new table strate strategy games instead. But once there, Greg enlisted them to go to the pizzeria. For days, he knew he had to do this. It was like he was drawn to this place. Or maybe he had, he had it all wrong. This could be a wild goose chase. Greg shined his flashlight around the corridor. They just explored the kitchen of the abandoned restaurant and had been shocked to find it was still stocked with pots, pans, and dishes, whose closed a pizzeria and left all that stuff behind. 
After that, after they left the kitchen, they found themselves next to a large stage at one end of what had once been the main eating area of the Durlet Pizzeria. A heavy black curtain at the back of the stage was drawn close. None of the boys had volunteered to see what was behind the curtain, and none of them had mentioned seeing the curtain move when they passed the stage. Heidi laughed again, better than hating with the fam. Hey, what's that? What's that? Cyril aimed his light in the direction of Heidi's gaze. Greg turned his flashlight that way too, toward the far corner of the large table-filled room. They stood in. The glow, glowing beam landed on a row of honking shapes lined up along a murky glass counter. Bright eyes reflected the light back at them from across the room. Cool, Heidi said kicking aside a broken table leg as he made his way toward the counter. Maybe Greg thought frowning at the eyes, one pair seemed to be staring right at him. Despite the confidence he felt before, he was beginning to wonder what exactly he was doing here. Idy approached the counter first. This is dope. He reached for something and sneezed when dust followed up from the stand. That's it. We're going to leave off there. We are on page four. Um, and I'll see you guys on the next chapter, everybody, or on the next pages. Bye-bye.